Coxie's in the house. The team is so excited that you're here. Felix said, I can't oh. believe it. I got to be in the lift with her. She's really cool. She's so lovely. Oh, She's such thanks. a legend. Thanks. Isn't it brilliant? So lovely to be here. So lovely to see you all. I was wildly exaggerating in the lift going, darling, I've not seen Chris for 32 years. <laughs> I was like, no, it's about five years, I reckon. But lovely to see you all. Nice to see you. Sarah Cox, way back. Sometimes to move forward, you have to go back. And so you got it all going on. you got Josie and you got um, Will and you got um, you got James. Uh, now, uh, jo- Josie is married to James at the beginning of the book and they're getting jiggy with it in the first three pages, <laughs> yeah. even though they're discussing divorce, having decided on divorce. Yes. But it's, it doesn't have to stop the jiggy. No, well, the the part of the reason for the divorce is the is that the the fruity fun times had paused for quite a while during the marriage, and something has reinvigorated them when they know that it's all over. So why yeah. not one final little fling? Yeah, extra time has been called. <laughs> yes, isn't it's it? Like... Okay, so so you got the the initial marriage twenty three years into the marriage. Yeah. You got that going on. You got the daughter. Yeah. Oh, um, it's fun, by the way, a fruity scene when you go to do the audio book and you realise it's a wet Wednesday morning and you've got to try and read out yeah. these fruity scenes. Yeah, and, you know. It's and then good. and then you you build towards um, there's this James comes in for sorry Will comes in for James and then Fred is uh, Josie's dad and Fred's no longer with us but he, he's based a bit on your dad but Sandra Josie's mum is not based at all on your mum. I just want to say no. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Jackie and Sandra are a million miles away from yeah. each other. The, yeah, um, but obviously it's best to write what you know. So you do know quite a lot of what's in the book, don't you? Yeah, hundred percent. I definitely grew up with some quite matriarchal, strong Northern women who can be quite tricksy. But it's definitely not my mum. Right. It's because Sandra's quite a handful, isn't she? She's quite a piece of work. She's great. She's a great character to write. I like writing tricksy characters. Yeah. Who are a bit of a handful, uh-huh. and I like writing funny women who are supportive and who are cheerleaders for their fellow females and then put them all together in a story well it is it's really funny Sarah. Thank you. It's really funny. It's 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 clever. It's revelatory. Um, yeah, you, you do go back. All oh, your character goes back. I keep I keep thinking that you and her because I know you and trying to you know draw yeah. parallels with her. How much of of you is in Josie? Where does Josie come from? Who else may have some ingredients that helps Josie's character out that you know of? Well, I definitely I'm living a little bit vicariously through my character because she's going back to her childhood farm. Yeah. And I would love to do that. That is the dream for me, but it ain't going to happen anytime soon. And so I've created this world where this character can potentially go back to the place where she was born and raised. There are, and then some, the parallels end with the tough childhood. I didn't have a tough childhood at all. I had a lovely mum. And also, luckily, my dad is, you know, still here farming his Herefords in Bolton. Uh, And obviously, Josie lost her dad when she was 12. And from then on, her life changed completely. Also, she stopped work for a while to raise her daughter. I didn't do that. As you know, I'm still schlepping around (laughs) trying to flog books and trying to talk fun stuff on the radio. So we're interwoven, but but it's easy for me to separate them. It's great, though. It's so great. You know, that whole thing, it's not so much the seven-year itch, as I say, you know, from a marriage point of view, Mm. the 23-year itch. And, you know, how much do we all want to go back? Should you ever go back? It's a nice idea, but what lies in wait for you there? And the big twists and the turns i mean i don't know how much to say about Uh, about the the you know when you come up with the sort of the moment because you know you know because you're writing it because you know i presume you know where you're going um, yes with the story 80 percent, i think i know and And then the the character kind of leads you to different places yeah and then we all need to know that because we have to trust you as an author um that you're going to get us to a place of excitement and surprise and revelation and boy do you yeah. You know, I don't know what to say, whether we talk about the, the keys in the fireplace or we talk oh, about... Oh, I don't think we can. We can? Yeah, can't. I don't oh, think well, we no, can. So... Oh, okay. But it's fine. It's right. fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we it's... can say different bits of... The best thing is, is that the, uh, at the back in the acknowledgements, I do thank a man called Paul who does come and cheap, uh, sweep me chimney because of the chimney sweep in the book. But you, thank <laughs> and them, I... <laughs> you also thank your mate, the vet, as well. Yeah, so James Greenwood, yeah. also uh, loving the countryside, farmer Richard. Yeah. You know, my mate Emily, who's a GP. I thank loads. I, even, I mean, I thank my horse. Yeah. Nelly. I don't know if that's been done before in the acknowledgements. I know. You know um, no, Nelly, and you do say, obviously, it's a fantasy to go back to the farm. Yeah. Um, it does, doesn't mean it's not going to happen, uh, but you would like a, a small holding for Nelly. 
hundred percent. Okay, yeah, I've currently... just got to extricate my husband from the place where he was born and raised and where his family is, which is North London. Right. And you know, my family's up in Bolton, so I'm, you know, I'm thinking north of North of London somewhere. I don't know if it's a pipe dream. I feel like I would love to to go back, way back. <laughs> also, it's the first acknowledgements where I've read that you fancied, you, you've uh, thanked rather, um, not your childminder, but your horseminder. Yeah, Elaine, she's, <laughs> she's amazing. Because sometimes when you're writing, you know from, from writing yourself that it's the first thing you think of when you're writing a book, when you wake up in the morning, like, oh, I've got to write, I've got yeah. to do some writing. Got and it really hangs over you. And it's a, it's a pleasure, but also it, it takes up so much brain space. Energy, yeah. And when I would go and have a riding lesson and Elaine's going... Your knees are too tight. Relax your legs and doing all that, you know, and she, relax your shoulders and do that, you know. Then it was the only time where I'd not be thinking about the book and just be thinking and just being in the moment. Well, I was going to talk to you about that. I was going to talk to you about the fact that, you know, I've written a few books, Vass has written a few books, yeah. but we haven't written fiction. I mean, it's hard enough, enough to write non fiction, but I mean, the idea of writing fiction. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you... I, this is the whole thing about novels. They melt my brain because you don't have to create one character. You have to create loads of characters, then a world for them to live in. Then you have to immerse yourself in that world and then something interesting has got to happen yeah. and then something else interesting has got to happen and something that we don't can't guess is going to happen is going to happen unless we the mills and booning and all this kind of stuff. We just want yeah. more of the same drug, you know, and... When I wrote most of my books, I was doing a, a show later on in the day because I couldn't do it. The book had to have my first energy, yeah, my biggest energy in the morning. And I know that you are, have arrived at, at Radio 2 ha having written in the morning, yeah. looking like you've run a marathon. Cause well, it's yeah, because, and also because it's, uh, it's obviously a BBC, so I can't really bang on too much about And I love to talk about what I've done that day. Yeah, yeah. But if I've been writing, I feel like I'm trying to do a cheeky plug. So yeah, yeah. I'd get in there sort of like, blinking into the daylight like oh from my writing for a few hours and not really be able to talk about it and actually it was the listeners who I know it sounds cheesy but it's the listeners who would lift me out of that slight sort of because it's quite lonely writing you know you're just on your own with yeah. your laptop and some biscuits and it would genuinely be the listeners <laughs> and their and their texts and like so Terry used to always say you know what I mean they provide all the material yeah. so it would be the listeners who would sort of lift me out of that so stupor funny. cheer the biscuits, me up the tea. So so I used oh, yeah. to have to write, I had have, had have a word count. So I'd have to write a thousand words before I was allowed my first cup of tea. Yes. And then I'd, I'd, I'd be allowed one like after 500 and first Bicky after 2,000 yeah. words. Yeah. And Impressive. That kind of stuff. You know, David Nichols, author of One Day, obviously. Yeah. Um, and he's got a new one out called You Are Here, which is cracking, which I've read. I think that's out next month. He said to me once when, when I was chatting to him before an interview, and he said, write a thousand words a day. That's yeah. all you have to do. Yeah, yeah. And if they're rubbish yeah. and you delete half of them or all of them, yeah, fine, yeah. but just get a thousand down a day. Yeah. So I try to do that with this. Of course, I got ahead of myself. I'm like, if I do 90,000 words, I'm 90 days. That's three months. I can get it on. It doesn't really work yeah, yeah. like that. No, but it's three but, pages a day, a thousand words, which is like 900 pages a year, which gets yeah. you down to 300, which get you know, with a decent yeah. editor. Uh, but, you know... Obviously. But, I love, but the character, you, you would be able to do it. The characters in here, no. they are cherry no, 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 picked no, no, from no, no, all no, the different no, people no, I meet. No, it's like talking to you, saying Bell about running. Mm. Oh, it's easy if you know how. Yeah. It's not, you, you, it's ridiculous. You love novels, don't you? You love fiction. Don't you? I love And Rachel reading. loved your first book. I loved your first book. Did, and I, so I got a copy of this. Thank yeah, you. I loved it. And then I got a copy of this one. Oh, well, a couple and of characters pop up from Throne. It's just, your voice is so distinctive and so relatable and it, it and and even the first couple of pages totally threw me because you don't you know you think you're thinking you're in one situation mm. and then you're not you're in a different situation but they're all so alive and vibrant on the page i loved it but i need to know what biscuits if you're there with your laptop and biscuits what's your what's your writing good biscuit that is a good question actually I, I like oh gosh cookie, what Maryland biscuits cookies. do I like you know what there's the, oh, I've gone posh there's Go these on. French ones that have got a bit of they're called butter like le beurre le biscuit <laughs> it's not called that but they're posh ones with a little sort of oh scalloped edge scalloped yeah, edge yeah I know the that's ones that's it yeah. do you know the ones I know the ones they're, they're delicious, delicious. <laughs> wow I um, mean but they're dangerous, you know, when you see people on the, you know, when you see uh, tree surgeons and they're putting stuff through, shredding yep. tr tree trunks through the shredder. I go like that with those biscuits. There's crumbs everywhere. I'm like, just feeding them in. Do you do a family tree? Because I was going to do a family tree here to talk about the book. Because I can follow your, it's, it's not, yes. I'm just guessing, 
as in you know relatives but as a, as a as a book family uh-huh. is concerned is that what you do uh, no i have um I have a room and I have lots of post-it notes and it's amazing to have it physically up on the wall in front of me. You feel like a real author. I know you are a real author. But it's really, yeah, it's really satisfying. There's yeah. something really satisfying yeah. about peeling off yeah. a post-it when you're not using it or Come when on. you're going to change something. And what's also satisfying, because it's quite naughty, yeah. is going writing on the post-it while it's stuck to the wall because I think that taps into some childhood thing about not being allowed to write on a wall. So going, giving a little note and peeling it and moving it. And so I can have all the characters there. And, you know, sort of all like a a constellation of stars. Constellation of stars, your own (laughs) superstars. And and it's fun because you are having more fun in this one than the last one because you've done it before. And so, like, you can throw in little little in-jokes like, like, you know, she listens to Jeremy Vine. (laughs) <laughs> yes, and that, that was another good one when I had to do an impression of Jeremy for the audio book. It's quite hard to do an impression, Jeremy. He's great. He's great. Because that sounds a bit like Jeremy Vine anyway. Yes. He sounds like a cross between sometimes Jeremy Vine <laughs> and Andrea Marr. <laughs> do I? Yeah, uh, effortlessly. Because you're, Jeremy, cause you're Welsh. No, 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 no. Come on, you've got. It. You did it for the audio book. You've got. You've got recent previous with this. <laughs> Give us your Jeremy. So, with Jeremy, I thought that you, you, he sometimes goes very serious, and then he suddenly goes high again. But it's so hard to do. I mean, it's impossible for me to do. I think listening to an impression of somebody doing an imp- sorry, listening to somebody doing an impression like John Coleshaw. Listen, to John Coleshaw, and yes. try and do John Coleshaw's Jeremy Vine. That, that's what you would do there. Yeah. I think so. Yes. Anyway. Um, so uh, what did you learn from the first book to write the second book by the way when did you start doing all this writing this, this... well I think clearly you love books because you have to yeah. know them to be able to do it I um, yeah I do love uh, I love reading you always I've love always reading. loved reading I didn't know that. and I did the first one I got I kept uh, publishers kept saying oh do you want to do a book this was years ago and they kept saying uh, do you want to do like a parenting book no um, and <laughs> that'd be quite a small book babe <laughs> and so whenever I met publishers just come on just come and have a chat and so I'd go and have a chat and whatever I talk about would be my dad's farm so that was the memoir right. came out of that which was till the cows come home yeah, which yeah. was lovely to write I'm yeah. really pleased I did that and then they said you write nicely why don't you ever go at fiction so throne was based on the pottery, you know, my experience yeah, yeah, on the pottery yeah, yeah. throwdown, so I could have a pottery class, and then this one. But I learned to plan a little bit more. But you've got to be careful because you don't want to ruin the magic by planning too much. So you want to make sure the character's taken you somewhere, but you have a bit more of a plan. Yeah, God, I, 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 has, I mean, it's got to be a labour of love because it really is. Because it's not about the. the the dosh, is it? To be no, honest, no. I mean, you're like literally this. on like three p an hour yeah, with a book. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I am anyway. Cause I spend so long, and you know. Whatever you're doing when you're in the middle of a book, you're, all you're thinking is, I should be writing now. And so you, it really does take... That's, that's why I bang on about it and I promote it so much on my socials because I just want people to, to like it and to enjoy it because I did put the graft into yeah, it. Yeah, and you can tell. I, honestly, Thank you. It's Thanks. mega. I mean, I'm not the biggest non-fiction fan. I'm always the first to say it, but I will read books if the authors are coming on the show and we're going to have a decent shot. I thought it was magnificent. Yeah, thanks so much, Chris. Thank you. Know, you. And it, it, this, you know, it doubles down, doesn't it? At the end, you've, you, you've got... Well, not at the end, two-thirds in, you you have this revelation that that's that. And you go, oh, no, here's another one, here's another one, here's yeah, another yeah. one. And then there's the, then there's the um, it's not the birth certificate, the life insurance. Yes. I'm saying too much again. Yeah, now, yeah, it's fine. Okay, I'm sure <laughs> I, I, got the, I nearly got the death stand, didn't I? <laughs> Don't mention the name of the life insurance <laughs> certificate. Anyway, Paul says, I love Sarah. Grew up with her on late night telly, etc. She's oh. been a staple mark throughout my life. Lovely. I mean, that's... Ding, Did you made. ever think in your Lovely. wildest dreams you'd be on a show chatting about your new novel? No, I mean, not your not first novel, not your like I, I want to accomplish this to write a novel. Your second novel. I know. I'm really, I'm really lucky. <laughs> I, I'm, I can't. I mean, can you? I mean, look. How did we do this? How did we blag know, this for so many years? Twenty eight years. Blaggers Inc. Uh, no doubt about that. And Tony says, how good does Sarah Cox sound on Virgin Radio? Well, <laughs> you're not the only one thinking that at the moment here on the 17th floor. with the- Sarah comes in, she says, oh, it's nice here, isn't it? I said, yeah, how nice. There, there you go, there's the boss. It's a lovely view. Oh, hi. Yeah. Hi. What's well, British Sign Language? British Sign Language for which show would you like? <laughs> we've got a very lovely view from the eighth floor of NBH yeah, in our new truth. studios. Uh, right, Kim in sunny Southampton says, This is the show I've always wanted. Chris and Sarah. Well, I go to work with Chris and the gang and work out in the afternoon with Sarah. Perfect combo. Listen, you can't say that. You can't. You, well, you can, I suppose. I've got to say hi to Helen at this point. Yeah. Um, right. My lovely boss. Very important. So, uh, saw your mate last night. 
I. I know you mentioned earlier Alex Jones. Oh, right. Seems we're talking about brilliant well, Welsh another, people. Another person here on this floor yeah. saw Will last night. And she sends her love. Were you all at the same wow. too? Was it? No, she, I went on the one show talking about the book. Oh, but right. she, but, so Will, Will. Yeah, yeah. How's he doing? He's around. God. Everybody's around. Lovely. Because he was, he was at one of our old um, haunts last night yeah. and he bumped into one of our other bosses here. And Will was saying, I don't know, I don't know, what does Chris think? And, and then he said, what, what do you mean? He said, it just smells a bit like the 90s again. It's all coming back. <laughs> well, 90s fashions and stuff are coming back, yeah. aren't they? My teens are like... What is you Just for when? people who don't know, what, give us, can you give us a little sort of career curve for you? When it all began, how it all started, where'd you it, go? Uh, it began, I guess, uh, when I was 21. So that would be 1985, all right, whatever. It would be <laughs> 90, let's see. Uh, so uh, I was, I got my first job at 1995 right. uh, on the Girly Show. Yeah, yeah. And then, Who was on that with you? On that with me on the first series uh, was Rachel Williams, American supermodel, yeah. and a wonderful woman called Claire, who only did the one series, and yeah. then it was Sarah Kaywood after that with Rachel. Rachel, who uh, she she did her filming in America because of visa issues, I think. And then there was some ups and downs for a few years. I did a lot on MTV, yeah. which is which I loved because they just shoved me in a room with a tiny fish eye camera, yeah, and I yeah. could just be me. Yeah. Um, and then I got interviewed by Simon Mayo on Radio One, right. and I, this was about '97, I think. And I thought, God, this is this is really fun. Radio's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't have to hold your belly in. You don't need any makeup on. Um, so I loved just being on radio, being interviewed. And then I got the call to be to go and try it for Radio One. I think that was about '98, '99. Because right. you've been at it so long now, haven't you? Yeah, well, the funny thing was, I thought I was getting invited to radio. Well, Matthew Bannister, the then controller, yeah, yeah, left, a, left a, an answer machine message and said, it's Matthew Bannister, yeah, every radio one. I thought, this is my mum, this is my big break moment. Yeah. And he was inviting me to Zoe's birthday party. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, OK, fine. But yeah, I got in there, breakfast for so a few years. So 25 years then? Yeah, and then 2013 got to Radio 2, which I, was the I dream. I always you as a newbie. And you sort of are compared to, yeah. to some of us, but 25 years, I mean, that's pretty, you know. Yeah, so it'll be, I first, yeah, 20, it'll be 28, it'll be 29 years this year. Wow. That I've been knocking about. <laughs> and then tea time, you know, tea time, obviously. Yeah. The, the dream. And it's all good? Yeah, I'm it's really, all good yeah, right. yeah, so lucky. All right, so um, we're two books in. This is, I, I didn't read the first one. Rachel read the first, she said she loved it. And she says, and also it's just really funny. I mean, you're a very funny person anyway, but it's really <laughs> funny. And also, of course, you can you can be funnier than ever, can't you, in a book? Because you, yeah. you, you can sort of chip away until it's all, you know, one paragraph after another yeah and there's a, yeah you can hear a little bit like my relationship with claire and my best mate and with my other best mates you yeah, can hear yeah, that yeah. sort of back and forth between between the yeah. friends and it creeps towards christmas as well yeah which for me always screams screenplay i just think you know oh, what, that'd be, yeah why not on the screenplay that'd be that'd be great wouldn't it and all, i just like some of the fun names as well i mean there's a dog walker in there with hound stretchers yeah, yeah. Is <laughs> which used to be called something else wasn't it oh uh, well she moves and then it goes on to yeah she changes the name of, of the dog walking when when the business changes yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit later on but yeah um so uh, uh, the next question is is there, are there more is there more coming yeah, this is a two book deal. This is the first of two. So, which is great when you yeah. sign it, but then you've got to write it. <laughs> I know. And then, uh, yeah, so I think that's, I think that it's, I'm actually starting to perspire yeah, on my back. <laughs> I think it's got to be in for like. See, Richard Osmond's just reading because he year. writes like three at a time, doesn't he? Who does said, that? Yeah, I've, already, oh, Richard, I've written yeah. the 17th one already. Yeah, now. he's a machine, isn't he? What's yeah, yeah. going on? And it's outrageous. Do you, do you talk to other authors now? Do you like compare notes and things? Not really. I mean, if I interview them, then yeah, then when when I meet, but I mean, even bef when I bumped into Vassos in the corridor, I was like, "You've written books, aren't you?" I'm just constantly saying that to people. It's different, though, isn't it, Vass? It really is different. It yeah. re I mean, because the thing is, we just write what happened, whereas you've got to make up what happened. Yeah. We were with we were with the team yesterday when they gave me a copy of your book, right? And we thought, okay, I mean, because I hadn't read your first book, but I know you, and I was really looking forward to reading it. And so I said, I just do you know what I do if I'm in a bookshop and if I'm at an airport or something, mm -hmm. I read the first paragraph and I sort of feel I know. Yeah. And we all, I said, right, I'm going to read the first paragraph of Sarah's book and then we'll know, we'll know, right? And then listen, listen to this, everyone. This is so good. The thing is, I can't quite take my eyes off James and not in a good way. He's still licking the fork. Yep, I'm in. Thank you very much. 
And, and the other thing is, when I was reading the texts between Josie and Chloe at university, I was thinking, has Sarah nicked my phone? Has she got my WhatsApps? Yes. Because that's just me and Emily. Yes, yes. Yeah, where she's just like... And also, what I get sent a lot by my kids, by my eldest, is GTG, which is got to go. Right. She's so busy. GTG. Seriously. Go. Seriously, with no vowels. Seriously. I'm not, I'm not into GTG territory yet. <laughs> Do you have a novel in you, Rachel? I don't know. I don't know. I will, I wanted to ask you, if you've asked so many authors about their book writing um, experiences, what's the best advice they've given you? I think the David Nichols A Thousand Words a Day is yeah. fantastic. Um, and also it's the old classic of, of just write what you know. And so I think that really helps. So, you know, that you've just got to have some of your own experiences in there. That always helps. But if anybody's thinking, listening now, thinking, I'd love to have a go at writing. I think everybody should write a memoir just for themselves or for their kids or for their... Yeah. For whoever. Because to write it all down, there's a real pleasure in it. And, you know, everyone's met characters all through their lives. And that in itself is a real real pleasant... And it does use a different bit of your brain. It's a real lovely thing to do. Without question. I mean, that that is an interesting thing, isn't it? Because often we hear this voice in our head, we talked about it last week, and you think it's you, but it's not you. It's your chimp, Mm. you know? And they say, don't listen to yourself, talk to yourself. And it's the talking to yourself voice that might have a book in it yeah but also they do say you know you've got to have a big enough um why to find a how and yes. some people just don't have time to write or to do that whereas if you sign a two-book deal you've got to do that <laughs> otherwise they sue you <laughs> yeah well hopefully it won't come to that no, no, i've got a sweaty back again you gotta give the, sorry about your yeah. sweaty back <laughs> Uh, please say a character in your next book has got to have a sweaty back issue. Uh, Val says, I'm loving Terry Cox. Coming from one proud northern to another. Oh, what a superstar. Val. So authentic. You know Val. I love Val. Yeah. Me and her go way back. I'll be early oh. worthy. Morning, Chris. Vast Rachel and Sarah. I absolutely love Sarah's first book. Virtually inhaled it. I adore between the covers. It's like a cosy chat with friends and now can't wait to read the second book. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, that comes back October. What's lovely on holiday, we, we did keep seeing people reading both books and the kids would be like... Mom, there's a woman reading your book by the pool. I'm like, shut up, don't look, don't look. Because, you know, obviously you don't want to be like, hey. Yeah. But yeah, it's a lovely feeling. You're and not then... tempted to go over and go, what no. bit you at? Well, she spotted me eventually, obviously, because, you she know me, we discuss were character and plot. around the pool. Yeah, and we have like, hi. Um, and then sometimes, That's cool, you know, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's lo- I mean, it's a great feeling. A lady on the tube, she waited till she was getting off at her stop and she just came over and she just picked, thrown up out of her bag and went, I've got your book. I was like, thanks. And then she leapt off the tube. Love it. It's lovely. I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate people spending money on books and, and reading them. So thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, another one of your bosses, uh, you, it rhymes with um, boss, Amanda Ross. Yes. Should we give her a shout out? Yeah. The the force of nature that yeah. is Amanda Ross. One of the titans of telly. A hundred percent. Inventor of the Richard and Judy book club. Yeah. The mastermind behind that. Okay, Saturday Kitchen. Saturday Kitchen, Bring huge it on. show. Yeah. yeah. Between the covers, what a woman. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Amanda's been massive, and she's always massively supportive with the books as well. Yeah, she loves the bones of you. Kathy Norfolk says, You and Sarah at the bookends to my radio listening day. You've got to stop this. You can't keep saying this. I know. I can't. I mean, you know, you could say if it was, if you could say in a certain situation, if that were ever to happen, can't say it now. <laughs> It's quite strange to hear you on the radio together, says Catherine North. It's not happened often because at your old place, I'd be I'd be in for you. Yeah. On brekkie, so our paths didn't really cross. Nobody ever saw us in the same room at the same I time. Came well, in one, I came in once and it was I think you were doing Saturday afternoon or something. I can't remember. And you were eating chicken chow mein. Do you remember? <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> was this at, was this at two or at one? At two, was that? Yeah, you just got. I think it was. I think it was a Chinese takeaway you just had. You were just. <laughs> oh, it might be. You were from, inhaling that as well. Yeah, it might be from. Uh, I like that Great Thai place. That it's called the Great Thai. That's not my recommendation. <laughs> That's uh, what it's called. Yeah, maybe that was me. It sounds like me if I was eating. I'm always. I'm never far from a snack. So I don't know how much to say about the plot for the book. Um, we've alluded to it. Uh, okay, let's just let's just recap on the main character. We open twenty three years of marriage. Um, they've discussed getting divorced. Three weeks into getting divorced, he's very reasonable. They've got a house mm. in Hampstead. Yeah. She gets back to the family farm. Uh, certain things happen and unfold. Uh, there's lots of drinking. Yes, there is, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of red wine. There's loads of red wine. <laughs> um, what, do you, what else do you want to say? Come on, Sarah Cox, way back I, out today. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's just, you know, it's about 
a woman. I think she's really brave, Josie, because I think she doesn't give herself enough credit. And yeah. I think a lot of people do that. And I think a lot of women do that. Yeah. I think she had a tough time. She made some of herself and she's had a great life, but she just needs to get to what is uh, the, uh, the kernel of herself, what yeah. is right at the centre. And to do that, she's got to go back. She's got to go way back. She's got to go back to the farm. She's got to discover who she is, and she and she and does. And what went on? Yeah, and what went on? And there's some, you know, there's some great friendships made along the way, and um, yeah, and I hope people will feel. When I was doing the audio book, I had to have a moment because bits of it had made me cry nearly, and it just felt. Why like was that then? I just think it probably I, resonated. It just probably it just resonated with me, and just you know, it just affected me. So I thought, well, if I've written it, then hopefully people will feel those emotions as well. And at the same time, you know, the, I was having a little chuckle, especially at my various impressions. And did your editor spot those bits in the book? Because really good editors spot mm. the bits that move the author, because they they ri- there's a different flavour to those particular passages. Yeah, I, the, I've got a great uh, editor called Hannah Black, and I love her, and she is brilliant because it's basically like dealing with uh, an emotional teenager when she rings me or when we because I'm not very good at direction and uh, because I think I've got a bit of what you know stay in your laneism a bit still imposter syndrome uh, yeah a bit of imposter syndrome yeah. and so any sort of feedback I'm like oh I'm terrible I'm a show off it's embarrassing and she's brilliant at handling me and just zeroing in on the good bits and gently you know Helping me, right. she's great. Well, uh, you can tell it's your second novel, uh, especially can you? first. That's interesting. From, can you? No, from many points of view. Oh, interesting. Uh, particularly one aspect now, which yeah. is you're doing what experienced um, authors do: is you've come in with something to match the book cover for the photo. It's your nails. <laughs> they haven't gone unnoticed. It's for the photo, isn't it? We're going to be holding the book. Yes or no? Of course it You've is. You've got the way back nails on, man. I mean, it's lovely as a book cover, lime green with a splash of red, but yeah, for yeah. nails, it's disgusting. It's, I can't wait. Yeah, it's quite it. a punchy it's, choice. It's horrible. People have been, been politely going, oh, I love your nails. I'm like, they're disgusting. But yeah, it's um, nice for a book. The thing that made me chuckle a lot also is you do point out to everybody... Um, via your husband that everything's all right at home oh yeah 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 Yeah. because when he first said what's it about babe and i'm like it's about a woman who's happily divorced and she moves to a farm how old is she well (laughs) she's about my age i mean you know he's like babe i'm like don't worry you've got nothing to worry about at the moment so all good (laughs) (laughs) keep money so yeah no we do not so great to see you again it's lovely to see you thank you all right um it's going to be another bestseller of course it is from the sunday times bestseller sarah cox from the sunday times best-selling author is sarah cox way back sometimes to move forward you have to go back great to see you lovely to see you thanks so much